Okay, so today I want to talk about quote unquote vocism and what this actually is and um, what vogue actually means because um, a lot of people use the term vogue um, all the time and I just want to look into it, what, what, what it actually is and I also want to debunk this whole nonsense about uh, get vogue, go broke, right? This right wing cope that if companies are getting uh, progressive or what is uh, hailed as progressive or what what is taught as progressive, that they all of a sudden um, close down their business and become broke, right? I want to look into that. And what sparked me to do this video is basically I saw this debate titled Has the Left Gone Too Far? And around the 18 minute mark, uh, Infrared uh, says something very interesting. Let us listen to this, right? Absolutely has. There's been a total psychosis where the elite kind of professional managerial upper stratum of our society have this cultural agenda and this agenda for what they consider to be a what social mores and norms and cultural norms should be that is completely disconnected from the sensibilities of probably the overwhelming majority of people in this country. And the more people resist and push back against their agenda, the more they accuse these people of being under the influence of fascism or the reactionaries or their evil and their bad. Okay, so he basically said that there's this managerial um, elite, right? Basically capitalists, and they are uh, have, having a cultural agenda, right, to push uh, values that uh, people like him say are vogue and all of that, right? Things like uh, LGBT and all of that. And But he says that the majority are actually against this or the people are actually against this. But this is sort of a um, top-down... Uh, agenda top-down cultural and social agenda by managerial elites right this kind of reminded me of um what yuri Besmanov was saying um about the university supposedly being infiltrated and run by marxists who brainwash students of uh, american students with marxism leninism right and Yuri Besmanov, by the way, he's an ex-KGB uh, defector who had like many lectures in, in the 80s, um, you know, during height of the Cold War and was fear-mongering about supposedly KGB agents roaming around everywhere in America and brainwashing people with Marxism-Leninism, right? Have, have a listen to this years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students. So, yeah, th this is basically... Um the theme, right, that there's there are these Marxists in universities who are brainwashing the the students uh, with Marxism-Leninism ideology, right? And right wing has really loved this this guy Yuri Besmanov because he basically supposedly confirms what they already think, right, with the supposed cultural Marxism agenda. And this is basically the same type of analysis that uh, that Infrared applied uh, with managerial elites brainwashing people to become Vogue. Um, this is kind of the same thing. Now we can actually look into what Yuri Besmanov said about Marxism con 
control Marxists controlling the universities, right? So I looked into it a little bit and I found this, the prevalence of Marxism in academia and by, by Brian Kaplan, who is not, he, he's kind of a neoliberal, right? So his bias is actually more against Marxism, right? And it says right here, as the Iron Curtain crumbled, people often joked, Marxism is dead everywhere except American universities. The stereotype of the Marxist professor runs deep, but is this stereotype grounded in statistical fact? Here are the results uh, from a 2006 nationally representative survey of American professors. They serve, the survey asked if the professor considered himself radical political activist or Marxist. Right. Overall, Marxism is a tiny minority. Just 3% of professors accept the label. Just 3% of professors in this survey accept the label. Now, the share rises to 5% in universities and 18% of social scientists uh, self-identified as Marxists. Right. But this is hardly a Marxist-run academia if overall um, just 3% of the overall professors in that nationally representative survey um, are self-identifying as Marxists, right? And now you might be saying, oh, but maybe they are covert Marxists, but uh, I don't see it as being realistic that there are just millions of or thousands of Marxists uh, professors who are just paid agents, uh, right? The, if they were Marxists, they would say that they are Marxists, right? Right? They would be promoting Marxism very openly. Um, but as you can see, Marxist professors are a minority in the universities, right? So this bullshit that Yuri Bezmenov said is is completely wrong, right? If in the 1980s uh, there were all these Marxists running around brainwashing people with uh, Marxism-Leninism, then we would see a greater number of uh, today's university professors actually being Marxists, right? But that is not the case, apparently. And likewise, we want to now analyze the claim about vocism uh, and it supposedly being a cultural agenda, right? A cultural agenda that is just uh, an attention of the capitalist ru ruling class um, who want to turn us all uh, supposedly uh, into LGBT people or some something like that. I, I don't even know what these people mean um, exactly but yeah so we can look at this right companies that get vogue aren't going broke they're more profitable than ever right and this is gonna be just a general theme of my video is that uh, vogue or like progressivism progressive liberal values they're profitable right? It is profit driving these, uh, the promotion uh, or the pretense more uh, of these values by international corporations, right? And you see that many conservatives say uh, that certain companies, they go broke if they show trans people in, in uh, advertisements or whatever right but this doesn't happen right um, le let me read you this about uh, this example curring right in many ways the curring curve of 2017 was the blueprint print for the get woke go broke phenomenon the slogan had yet to be coined but the sentiment was certainly there if you recall a, re a republican candidate named uh, Roy Moore was running to uh, represent Alabama in the Senate when multiple women accused him of sexual misconduct. 
Fox News host Sean Hannity calls, cast doubt on the allegations warning viewers not rush to judgment against Moore, which caused Curring to pull ads for their coffee makers uh, from, this sh from his show. This was right as the uh, Me Too movement was taking off. In response, Hannity's fans called for a boycott and started smashing their uh, Keurigs for social media. So how is Keurig uh, doing now? The parent company Keurig Green Mountain acquired Dr. Pepper Snapple Group in a $18.7 a billion dollar deal in 2018 forming uh, Keurig Dr. Pepper Inc., the third largest beverage company in North America. The behemoth's annual grow gross profits have swelled ever since, reaching uh, $7.3 billion in 2022, a nearly 5% increase from the previous year. Turns out a handful of Hannity's viewers throwing a ta tantrum didn't make a dent. So as you can see, uh, this uh, right-wingers uh, boycotting something and boycotting uh, something like Me Too has no effect. Me Too, if, if your company supports it, uh, the Me Too hate mob, against men that uh, does not shrink the company's profits one bit right or another example united airlines always hostile to corporate initiatives have uh, that have a width of affirmative action conservative were predictably increased to learn that in 2021 that Amer uh, united airlines uh, planned for half of its Uh, incoming pilot trainees to be women and or uh, people of color. Now that United Airlines said that half of its trainees, uh, pilot trainees should be women. This is something uh, just to spite men and to get them uh, not to have that job, right? So there, there's an anti-male element, um, right? But this uh, does not mean that it's not profitable right because cut to the beginning of 2023 and united was reported reporting fourth quarter uh, 2022 profit of 843 uh, million dollars beating wall street expectations right um, another example disney right uh, they were promoting LGBTQ characters in family films, right? Um, so, that, and there were anti-Disney uh, rallies and conservatives like uh, Marjorie Ta Taylor Greene have lashed out at uh, Disney, right? But Disney has not really uh, gone bankrupt, right? <laughs> says right here however much disney lost in the sales as a result it was less than a drop in the bucket their gross profit for 2022 was 28 uh, point, point 21 billion uh, dollars a 27 percent increase from 2021 And they generally outpaced media competitors, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, get woke, go broke is, is horseshit, as you, as you can see, right? I mean, you can go to this whole article. I will, I will just not cover everything here, every example. Uh, he, here's another one, Amazon, right? They had this, this cringe series, uh, rings of power right with lots of feminist propaganda in it and has have they gone bankrupt right of course not right like uh, others in the tech sector amazon has recently laid off thousands of workers um, 
the industry-wide trend may be the result of increased automation, a slowing global economy and corporate over-expansion in the past couple of years. Even so, Amazon is still beating Wall Street income forecasts and breaking records on ad revenue. It remains the fifth largest company in the world by market capitalization. So yeah, I mean, again, this, this get vogue, go broke nonsense has been debunked very easily, right? I will link the article in the description, right? Um, but yeah, vocism is vocism is very good for profit, right? It is very profitable. Profitable. Voc capitalism is simply capitalism, and it is good for business, right? Have a listen to this. Instead, critics should ask themselves why have more and more business integrated environmental, social, and uh, governance ESG criteria into their uh, models over the last decades? The answer is that they are simply aligning their resources with their stakeholders' interests, which is efficient, profitable, and both. Uh, economically and environmentally beneficial now on the on the last one i kind of doubt with the environmentally beneficial but we'll get to that right the fact is that the triple bottom line models have been proven successful in a meta-analysis of more than 2000 studies nearly two-thirds of these studies showed a positive correlation between ESG and financial performance, while less than 10% showed a negative correlation. The hypothesis, these firms are innovating, adapting to the market and competing for resources and talent. Right? What's more, many uh, consumers prefer businesses that demonstrate impact or align with their values. A recent Price Waterhouse Coopers customer loyalty survey found that younger consumers, Gen X, Millennials and Gen Z are more likely to internationally support like-minded brands. These generations collectively account for uh, 62 of the US population, a huge consumer market that will only increase spending as they age and build wealth. Businesses must be able to compete freely f for this market share, including by uh, demonstrating social and environmental impact that attracts customers. So basically, uh, it is not some cultural agenda that is being driven by the capitalist class. They are just seeking profits and they want to cash in on a growing market of consumers like uh, Gen Z and Millennials and all these uh, uh, young people who support progressivism or, well, what what is basically seen as progressivism, right? To me, feminism is not progressive, right? The very opposite, actually. But regardless, uh, this is what these people uh, prefer and the market is reacting to that, right? This is profitable as proven by this meta-analysis of 2000 studies, right? So this has nothing to do with some conspiracy or with some cultural agenda. This is simply very profitable, right? Uh, he, here's, here's another study that shows this impact of ESG performance on firm value and profitability. Our findings suggest that overall ESG combined score is positively and significantly associated with firm value. Uh, individual social and governance scores have a positive and significant relationship, while environment uh, score does not have a significant relationship with firm value. On the other hand, ESG combined score, uh, environment, social and government, governance score have positive and significant relationships with firm profitability. 
These findings suggest that investing in high ESG performance promises financial return for the firm in terms of both value and profitability. So this shows you that this is very profitable. And I can show you multiple lines of evidence, right? Here's another one. Um, does investing according to ESG principles mean sacrificing returns? ESG factors can have a positive effect on corporate financial performance with evidence showing that higher quality companies tend to make better profits. They can also influence single stock returns with evidence showing that shares of better quality companies can perform better than inferior peers. Finally, they can benefit portfolio risk and return. There is evidence across many time periods and regions, especially in emerging markets, that integrating ESG into the investment process and investing in companies with better ESG scores can add to performance. ESG integration can lead to lower risk. Given the uh, relationship between risk and return, maintaining a similar return while lowering risk is an attractive outcome. So this is very attractive for investors, right, who are seeking to make a great return on investment, right? So of course, uh, so, uh, what is called vogue capitalism is going to grow, right? Um, here's more evidence. Links between ESG profitability exists. New research businesses which express commitment to ESG have seen profits jump 9.1% uh, over the past three years, says accountancy firm Muir Global. Well, here's more evidence. Increased uh, ESG commitment leads to higher profits report. An increase in employers' environmental, social and governance ESG investment leads to higher profits, according to a new report. 9 and 10, 90% of company executives said their ESG uh, spending led to moderate or significant financial returns and most of them, 66%, see this happening within three years reported Infosys. So the thing is very clear for profit, right? Here's more evidence. Uh, Ken 3M announces record profits driven by ESG assets, right? So Basically, the evidence is just piling up that um, what is seen as Vogue capitalism is very profitable. Vogue is very profitable. Vogue is done for profit, right? It has nothing to do with uh, managerial elites having some preference for uh, gay rights or trans rights or anti-racism or environmental protection, right? Uh, they don't care about these things. And I will prove that later on, right? They don't give a shit about these things. They care about profits. This is profit driven, right? And here's another thing, right? People are always uh, talking about the Great Reset and the World Economic Forum, right? Well, Basically, this is also about capitalism, right? Uh, the pitchforks are coming if we don't reform capitalism, says Davos founder Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schwab, founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, says that if you don't want a revolution, it's time to use government to more strongly regulate businesses, address climate change and fix income inequality. And it's also very revealing that he says here, uh, Schwab maintains that it's not capitalism itself that is the problem, but the unrestrained way that capitalism runs. Quote, I am convinced that the entrepreneurial strength of each individual is the driving force for real progress and not the state. 
end quote. He says, quote, but this individual power has to be embedded in a system of rules that prevent it from going overboard in one direction or the other. Uh, a strong sh state must fulfill this function. The market alone does not solve the problem, end quote. So basically, he is just trying to um, trying to save uh, capitalism by giving some concessions in directions of environmentalism and pretending to close uh, uh, gaps in economic uh, inequality, right? Because uh, the growth. Uh, of inequality be between rich and poor is just going out of control, right? Um, you can look these things up, right? And the environmental destruction is going out of control. And many people rightfully so associate these things with capitalism. But of course, the, the billionaires benefit from capitalism and the billionaires are sitting in Davos, right? And they meet their network there. So this great research uh, that right wing is fear monger about is has nothing to do with communism or some bullshit like that. It's just a way for uh, capitalists to pretend that they care about the environment and all of that. Meanwhile, they just want to save capitalism, right? the system that actually got them rich, right? They want uh, to keep people from revolting against capitalism. And also another factor that is uh, kind of important here is that, uh, that women are uh, very strong both in the uh, in the ESG investing game, but also as consumers, right? And that, of course, also shapes the economy and then subsequent, subsequently the culture and all of that, right? Reports show women leading the charge in ESG investing, right? Here's another thing. Most women who invest take ESG factors into account most female clients want their investment decisions to take into account environmental, social, and governance factors, even if this limits their investment options. Women clients twice as likely as men to favor ESG. ESG investing uniquely aligned with goals of women investors. Right, so goals like feminism, for example, um, and we can also see that the female consumer market is the majority. Right, women make up uh, more than half of the U.S. population and control or influence eighty-five percent of consumer spending. Right, and of course, companies are gonna see this, see these statistics, and already orientate themselves uh, towards uh, pleasing women, right? And this is, of course, shaping the economy and subsequently the culture, right? Uh, so it has nothing to do with some conspiracy or cultural agenda that is top-down engineered or some bullshit like that. This has everything to do with market forces and capitalism, but also with a general disposition among the masses to be anti-male, right? Recent study came out that showed that pro-female and anti-male biases are more influential than race and other factors in implicit association tests, right? And we see in many studies that the public consciousness has a certain anti-male bias and certain anti-male and pro-female disposition which is, of course, another factor uh, that is driving um, the influence of feminism, for example, right? And, for example, also uh, the, the climate-friendly uh, 
movement is also characterized uh, very much with um, this propaganda of all oh, men destroy the environment and all of that, which place which places uh, the blame on men, which is gonna be more readily believed by a public that is already biased against uh, men, right? And of course, what also plays into it are uh, feminists uh, like the Whisper Network that destroy uh, male comic book artists, right? Um, promote false accusations and network in um, more uh, male in uh, entertainment male entertainment industries to um, yeah to spread false rumors and to push their own uh, anti-male bias there right and push out the male comic book artists and ruin male uh, entertainment right or entertainment that that men like to consume, right? And we also see among the general public strong support for LGBTQ plus rights, right? More Americans than ever say they support non-discrimination protections for LGBTQ plus people, according to a new poll released by the Public Religion Research Institute. Still, 20% of Americans say they oppose these laws, including 7% who say they are strongly opposed to them. So basically, this this thing, what uh, Infrared said, that there's this majority that is uh, against Vogue. Uh, I don't think that this is the case because uh, there's only like, only 20% uh, of Americans that oppose laws um, that pr uh, protect LGBT people against discrimination, for example, right? Uh, here's more evidence, right? More Americans support LGBTQ rights than ever before. And US support for LGBTQ rights grows even as gap widens uh, between Democrats and Republicans, a uh, survey says. Support for non-discrimination laws has risen overall since 2015, even among Republicans. So there seems to be overall support for non-discrimination laws uh, for, uh, for LGBTQ people, um, right? And of course, the the capitalists, the markets, the firms are see that they see these demographics, and they they see that this is a a chance to cash in, right? To orientate their products towards these values. So this has jack shit to do with some conspiracy or with some uh, cultural agenda. Right, this is simply a reflection of uh, the the market reacting to um, uh, demographics and preferences, consumer preferences. Right, and we also see this with, for example, plant based. Right, this is also profitable. Right, we see plant based alternatives. Uh, to animal animal products being heavily pushed because it's profitable, right? Um, and for basically no other reason, right? As soon as these things become less profitable, they get taken off the shelves, right? Um, Plant-based profit, right? 73% uh, of plant-based products are purchased by omnivores and flexitarians with plant-based demand growing across all categories. Retailers need to stay ahead of the curve if they want to retain their increasingly health-conscious and environmentally-minded consumers. And it also says here what consumers want. Um, 
almost two thirds of consumers prefer products that are similar to foods they already know. Yet at the same time, many consumers are seeking to reduce their meat and dairy intake. This creates a natural opportunity for plant-based alternatives to satisfy consumers' traditional taste and texture needs while also meeting their modern preferences for healthier and more sustainable foods. Well, okay, I disagree with the healthier and sustainable uh, thing. I don't think these foods are healthier or sustainable at all, but <laughs> that's another topic, I guess. But still, uh, consumers are uh, reducing their meat and dairy intake, and they they uh, instead try out these plant-based things, right? Or at least this is seen by the market as profitable, right? So again, this is being pushed not because of some conspiracy, but because of, um, of basically profit-seeking, right? But do these firms actually have a a cultural agenda outside of profit, right? Do, do these firms actually care about the environment and minority rights and LGBT people and all of that? Well, I don't think so, right? And the evidence supports me on that. The firms that fund anti-LGBTQ uh, politicians while waving rainbow flag, right? So there, there are firms that that wave the rainbow flag, yet they fund uh, Republican anti-LGBTQ plus politicians, right? U.S. companies who have poured money into pride celebrations have also spent millions of dollars backing politicians that voted against a landmark piece of legislation designed to protect LGBTQ plus people from discrimination. The Equality Act passed the House of Representatives in February, but is yet to be passed by the Senate. All but three Republicans in the House voted against LGBTQ plus equality. Those 206 politicians were bolstered in part by huge donations from U.S. corporations. Amazon, for instance, donated over uh, $450,000 to politicians who voted against the act, according to data from the Center for Res Responsive uh, Politicians for the 2020 election cycle but the company is still happy to garner profits from queer identities. The company offers a special pride store offering unicorn pool floats and rainbow stripped keys with sneakers. So, uh, yeah, and here's, here's even more evidence, right? 25 corporations marketing pride donated over 10 million dollars to anti-LGBTQ plus politicians study, right? And yeah, I mean, there are companies like, uh, there are companies like Walmart and Comcast that supported anti-LGBTQ plus candidates, but still they pretend to be for uh, LGBTQ and all of that, right? So as you can see, these companies, they don't give a shit about gay rights, trans rights, and all of that. They don't care about these things. They care about profits, right? So this notion that they have some cultural agenda and they prefer, uh, that they prefer trans rights or anything like that, that is total nonsense. They clearly don't care about minorities, right? And they also don't care about the environment. Uh, here's, a good, here's a good article, The Myth of Green Capitalism. 
Not surprisingly, the result has been a wave of greenwashing. The financial industry has happily poured trillions of dollars into green labeled assets that turned out not to be green at all. According to a recent study, uh, 71% of ESG themed funds, supposedly reflecting environmental, social or governance criteria, are negatively aligned with the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement. So as you can see, these ESG funds and companies don't care about the environment and um, are just pretending to do to do that, right? So again, this notion that there's some cultural agenda and some conspiracy uh, that pushes progressive values and vocism and all of that is complete nonsense. It is just that these capitalists cash in on a liberal crowd who care about uh, climate change and all of that and LGBT rights um, and also a feminist biased anti-male crowd right? that is misandric um, which is basically not just the liberal part of the population, but uh, people in general, right? Um, yeah, and they they profit from from younger generations and from women making these kinds of consumer choices, right? And investing in ESG and all of that, even though, as the evidence shows, ESG firms don't care about. Uh, gay rights, trans rights, environment, protection, and all of that. Um, so yeah, there's no conspiracy, there's no cultural Marxism, there's no uh, vocism conspiracy, great reset conspiracy bullshit going on. There's just capitalism uh, and liberal slash woman consuming behavior and anti-male bias that is all that's going on here right there you go the evidence is clear uh i hope that people start to understand what vocism is actually all about it's about man hating and it's um but again this is driven by human psychology and by feminist man haters right and and also, vocalism is driven by profits uh, who want to cash in on liberal markets, right? So yeah, that that's basically all that's going on, right? And get vocal broke is total bullshit, as I've also seen these, uh, as I've also shown, these companies make more profits than ever, right? So yeah, peace out.